Hey everybody, it's Captain Kyle and I'm here with Inferno, the legacy version. Very cool toy. And I am going to actually put him up against Inferno, the Beast Wars version, the original. Very cool toy. But which one is cooler? That's what you get to decide. I'm gonna take this guy out, compare him to him, and you get to tell me which one serves the royalty better. Yes, my queen. Remember, I don't rock and roll, I burn. Be right back. All right, so as you might have been able to tell by that little rant before, I kind of like Inferno. He was a very cool character. Not saying, you know, I'm really into bad guys. I leave that to, you know, my girlfriend. But he was definitely one of the more fun Predacons. Just because he was so serious and that's a little fucked in the head. So I have the original in bot mode, just as the new one is in bot mode in the packaging. And let's break out the new one with my, you know, little pen knife there. Ooh, and the first thing that pops out is that little shitty piece of paper. Instructions, and there he is, constrained by the packaging. All right, let's release him into the wild. Free at last, free at last. So there he is out of his package, but I'm actually gonna go in reverse order. I am going to look at the original before we get into the new one. So you can see where he's come from. So let's look at the original Inferno. Now, he's not bad in his original robot mode. Bends at the uh, wrist and his gun kind of fell apart. We'll just shove that back in there. We'll get to his gun in a little bit. As one of the uh, original Beast Wars, he's actually pretty poseable. He can almost, though, not quite, eh, very close. Yeah, I'd say that's a toes up Jean-Claude Van Damme. We'll put you over here for now. He's got uh, knee joints. He doesn't have ankle rockers, but he's got knee joints his, and ball joints on his legs, so his Legs can go in a pretty wild and wacky range of motion, so he could do that Wednesday dance pretty easily, though she used more of her arms. He does twist at the upper waist, though you can kind of see he's got a big booty. His arms are on ball joints, so that's a pretty uh, wide range of motion. He's got elbows, which are also ball joints, so they can move out. He doesn't have fists per se. He has these claw type things and they do not twist. His head turns quite freely. So like I said, he's a Beast Wars figure. Little back heavy. He's actually pretty show accurate. Not as show accurate as some things, which we'll get to. Side view, you can see he's got the little bit of kibble with his ant legs coming back and his butt, his ant butt. There's his ant butt from the rear, and you can see it from the side. Now, gimmicks with him, you could open up his ant butt, and it's got a little rocket thing in there. Now, I have to swing these legs forward to really demonstrate this, but this allowed him in the show for flight. So you press this down, and it spins. And this is also presumably jets, so. He could fly for the royalty. He's a flying ant. Hey, flying ant. But his wings come out of his ass, kind of. It's more of a propeller type thing. So that's a neat uh, original gimmick and the ability to fly. He's got the little engine that could in there that you can press on the uh, lever. Now his mandible, if you want to be show accurate, you put the missile launcher, you leave it inside that's weapon storage when he's in ant mode. But he basically shoots, ah, doesn't stay on that well, though it's just me fumble fingers. He basically shoots missiles, which are his back legs. And it's not the best setup when he is actually, when you combine them, which again is more show accurate, but when you have it out, you can press down on the trigger and sometimes they actually fly out. There they go. They've actually got pretty good springs on them. If that didn't go off the table, I would have had to probably rescue it from a cat. Now you can combine them 
and I had the missile in wrong, so if you actually put it in the right way and push it forward, yes, it shoots, so it's fine. Or if you want to give him more armament, you can have the gun affixed to one claw. I'm gonna move back these middle legs here. I mean, spring-loaded weapons were very cool in the old days, but I'm over them, you know? Especially missiles that got lost. And if you lose these missiles, well, he won't have a leg to stand on. Okay, because the missiles are actually his back legs, so he'll have four legs to stand on. But yeah, so the mandible can be some kind of melee weapon. Can, you know, chomp on people. Melee, melee, whatever. However you want to say it, I think it's melee. So he can uh, definitely maybe shoot flames out of this, you know, because that's how he kind of rock and rolls. Shoot missiles. You know, he's uh, overall a cool looking and creepy looking ant. And the face, I mean, God, look at that toothy smile. I will say he must use white strips. Got the antenna. He's, again, he's not exact to the show, but he's one of the closer figures that they released. Now, my understanding is they thought he'd be even more popular than he was. So he ended up being a shelf warmer for quite some time, just because they produced so many and packed him heavily in cases. There's a little extra trivia. The bad part, he's a little floppy, and that's part of the problem with Megas from the, uh, some of the Megas from, which used to be what they called Voyagers in the Beast Wars line is they're floppy. And their joints, if you use them too much, because they're all ball joints, can get a little loose. But he actually stands pretty well. I've had him for quite some time. And uh, yeah, he may even be the Japanese version, because uh, I came to Beast Wars late and got a lot of the Japanese stuff. He was released singly, and he was also released with Cybershark in a versus pack. So that's the original. Let's take a look at the new guy. So. The, actually, the head looks very similar, but definitely different. Well, let's take a look at him. He's got kind of the molded feet here, kind of an homage to the original. He does have ankle rockers if we're going to start all the way at the bottom. But a cool looking figure so far. He can easily full Jean-Claude Van Damme. He can even fold down his heels to really get his crotch into the floor, if that's what ants like to do. So. He also has a bend at the knee. He's got a swivel with his leg so he can shake off his foot if he gets some dog shit on it. Now yeah, he's pretty articulate. And because of the ankle rockers and such, he's a little back heavy just like the original. So I don't know if that's supposed to be part of the homage, but he does have heels for more stability. So you can put him in some dynamic poses there. Does he twist at the waist? Yes, he does. I don't know if that's part of the transformation or not, but he does twist. Not, well, yes, fully around if you, you raise his butt a little bit. Well, the, the ant butt. So he can twist at the waist, his arms. Now he's got ant legs on his arms. So while the range of motion is there, they can clash. So that's kind of a little bit awkwardness just because of his beast mode. And yes, it can swivel out, but then his leg hits his back, so it kind of constrains that a little bit. I mean, how much is he going to swivel? But he's got good elbow joints. The fist on the end actually does turn, so he can turn his fist in case he wants to burn you gangster style. Oops, I popped open his beef face on his chest. So the arms are in good uh, moving order, though he does have these legs, which you can move, you can actually tell that these move somewhat, at least uh, some of the legs move. So his head can turn from side to side. He can nod. Yes, royalty. Of course, my queen. I wish he'd stop calling me that. Yes. Yeah, I do very bad impressions of some characters. Some I do decent, you know, my Ironhide, even my Megatron G1 is pretty good. But anyway, overall, some good posability. He's got this weapon, which is doesn't shoot anything, but it looks pretty cool and uh, looks like it could be a flamethrower. When you look at him from the back, he's similar. He's got a big butt and you can see the uh, side profile shows his butt. 
you know, if you like big butts and don't lie about it, you know, this could be the figure for you. Now, apparently it does have hinges, so this does open up and it does spin, but it doesn't have any type of lever to spin. Ooh, and you can spin that around, so I guess that's uh, a better way to have it. So yeah, you can definitely get that spinning effect. And from what I understand, you can take the gun and plug it right into his ass. It's a butt plug. And that even more makes it like the original. So two butts side by side, and you can see they're pretty similar. And both of them, just looking at them now, give me kind of, you know, vibes from the upside down. God damn, Demogorgons everywhere! But there you go. You'll be back soon, don't worry. And I suppose if he doesn't want to carry his gun, he can leave it plugged into his ass. Now, it's actually very similar in the fact that he's got these two middle legs, I guess. I'll know more when I transform him. It could be back legs or front legs, but they kind of have a similar place to the original. Let's bring him out here so we can compare side by side. We'll even give you your, sorry, I hope this isn't uncomfortable. Mm. I know, I should have used lube. So seeing them from the front angle, side by side, they're actually not that dissimilar. I can also tell you that there is light piping on the Legacy version so that when the light goes in, his eyes should glow red at proper angles. And they actually look overall pretty similar. Though this original one is a bit shinier. It might even have some metal components and uh, the leg just popped off. That's one of the problems. But they both look good. They're very similar in height. Now, because the missile's on a hair trigger, I'm just gonna stick it back into his foot so he can be a little more symmetrical. You can still hold the missile launcher. It's fine, dude. Relax. So very similar looking figures and they're both pretty poseable. Maybe a slight advantage for the Legacy one just because of the ankle rockers and the, the joints being not just ball joints. But similar in height. So this is one situation I can say the Mega and the Voyager are pretty much the same size. This one's a little shinier, face is a little bit different. He doesn't have the white teeth on the new one, but he does have that winning smile. So I think they'd be friends or they'd rip each other to pieces, you know, depending on their moods. All right, let's compare beast modes. So here is the original Inferno in his ant mode. And the transformation, despite it being a mega, is actually pretty simple. And it's a lot of just where you pose the uh, arms and legs and fold out the six legs that he has. In this mode, you could, of course, open up the tail and have it spin, but I'm not gonna bother doing that. He also has mandibles that open. That's kind of a cool effect. And you could put the missiles in there, but again, ripping off his back leg to use as a missile, not the best idea. Of course, I imagine they regenerate somehow or, or come in from subspace or some shit like that. That's technology we have no idea about. I mean, he's a decent looking ant. He looks similar to the show. By no means perfect, but you know, he's an older Beast Wars. And you can't easily put him just up on his legs. Well, his robot knees will hit the ground. And this is kind of annoying how it twists so easily, but he's an ant. Generally, you would just leave him in this mode and then transform him so he could attack the Maximals on behalf of his queen. But the moving mandibles is a nice little feature there. Ah! Just again, I wouldn't suggest putting the missiles in it in his beast mode. As far as possibility, I mean, you can move the arms a lot, but it gets awkward. I mean, basically the front legs are attached to his arms and the back legs are attached to his legs. These middle ones just don't do too much. But he's an ant. Let's check out this guy's beast mode. And there he is in ant mode. Now, weapon storage is on his back, which I think is kind of stupid. I'm gonna put that aside, just like the old G1 days. But if you wanna put it on, he could be blaming people. I thought it might go into his ass, but uh, apparently he puts his legs up to his ass, so that's for the transformation. But he is a cool looking ant. I would say he's a little bit better, probably more accurate as an ant than the original, but pain in the ass to get into this mode, I do have to say. It was not easy, but 
He does have mandibles, they're not automatic. The head tends to split a little bit. And his antenna can go back and forth, but he can definitely chomp. Again, he can put the weapon on his back so he can fire while in beast mode. And the way his legs are set up, he actually can rear up like a fire ant and, you know, bite you. So I'd say beast mode, he's probably a little bit better, but I'm not an entomologist. And I know that's a thing. I think it's definitely an improvement, but obviously doesn't have the gimmicks of the original. Side by side, you can see this guy's a little taller in this mode, just because of the way the legs are. This guy's a little longer. Depending on how you put the legs, this one is about eight inches long, whereas this is a trifle over six, but he is obviously taller. And the more complex transformation allows a better beast mode for this one, I would say, but again, he doesn't have launching missiles, which some people like. He doesn't have the trigger to spin the tail automatically, and he can't fly and shoot because the jet thing is supposed to go up his ass while it's so he can't shoot at the same time. So that's a problem. I mean, what's the advantage of taking the high ground if you can't, you know, blast? Or, you know, swipe with a lightsaber and take off somebody's uh, arm and legs. So they're both very similar in color scheme. This one again has the shinier look. He's got the, the green deco on his back and on his tail. The shinier, more faceted eyes. These eyes are much smoother. Just has a darkened area on his thorax, I guess. Whatever that area is. So they both have pluses, they both have minuses. Mainly the weapon storage. I'd say that's a major minus, but both are cool figures. And if you want to get this guy, he's still available at retail. I'll put some links down in the description so you can pick him up. The uh, original, you would have to go to eBay, so I'll put a link so that you can quickly and easily find that guy on there as well. But what do you think? Which Inferno do you prefer? The original, the classic, with the missiles and, you know, spinny tail? Or the guy who you need to shove stuff up his butt to make him fly? But obviously a more accurate ant. Let me know down in the comments below what you prefer. And while you're mulling that over, you can also check out this video over here where we talk about another Beast Wars era character and how she was remade in the Kingdom era. And of course you can, you know, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Super thanks would be great. We'll see you next time. As always, have fun and good hunting for the royalty.